Welcome to Kellis Coder. Today we will have a look at cool retro terminal. And we're going to make it even cooler by slowing it down. Motherfucker! So this is actually a little in-between video because I am waiting on components. They were supposed to come in on Wednesday. They finally got in on Friday evening. And those components are for a little uh, piece of kit that I'm building that hypothetically, it could be a film video, but hypothetically would prevent Google, Siri, CIA, FBI, my gangster friends to uh, eavesdrop on me with microphones. So stay tuned, you will see that one in the, video, in the future. Yeah, so in between I was watching this YouTuber called Fridos, who also supports the Fridos application. And he made a video on how we used to use Unix in the 70s, 80s and 90s. And he installed this awesome terminal emulator called Cool Retro Term. And I was like, that is awesome. But then somebody replied, yeah, but it's... It instantly throws the data on the screen. It should actually scroll it. So he was like, yeah, that will be a nice feature. And he looked into it and that feature is open since 2014. So nine years. So I picked up the content. I figured I can do that in an hour. Well, honestly, it took me about three hours. Then I had to go to bed. And then I only had to slow down. And I'm currently still working on actually the UI part allowing it to configure in the UI. That is working, so now just have to pass it on through the enormous object hierarchy. And that is why object programming often sucks. If you want something to be passed on in the lowest, and you have to pass it on through the whole chain of objects. That is sucky. Because these objects are nested, they're not inherited. But yeah, so let's jump in and show you how I slow down the terminal, because I think it's a nice little learning experience. Slow it down, baby. We love it slow. Mm. So as you can see, I managed to slow it down, behaving like a 19,200 terminal. But it was quite an ordeal. This is a cute application, a C++ cute, and it has this massive object hierarchy with emulation, Terminal display, which uses the screen window class, configure, I hate that inconsistency. We have the uh, cute widget that calls a session uh, object. And within that session object, we have a PTY object and a lowercase PTY, and then the KPTY device. And that is where I needed to make the slowdown changes. This really interacts with the PTS and the serial interface. So how did I go about reverse engineering this code? Where should we start? Well, I figured this is a terminal, so it probably used TermIOS, which is a structure that is used to actually configure the serial interface, including the baud rate. So I figured if they use TermIOS, I just put in the baud rate and I'm done. So if we go to the dev, you will actually see we have these TTY interfaces. These are your serial interfaces on Unix. And then you have PTS, Post Traumatic Stress Syndrome, which I usually get from Windows and not from Linux or Unix. And these are virtual terminals. And I made the assumption that PTS probably uses the exact same hardware stack, although virtualized. So I could probably set TermIOS just like I do on TTYS. So I was looking where it is actually being set. So here I see Ah, a set structure call, so they made their own wrapper TC set attributes, okay. And let's go through them, and I see a lot in below there of setting these structures. So let's go and see what happens. Well, this is the flow control, no, I want it to set always and not just in flow control. What else do we have? No, that doesn't look... Erase? No, that doesn't look like it. <laughs> ah! Start! Now this would be the ideal place, because when we start, we set up the speed. So I added these two lines. I set CI speed and CO speed to a 9600 bots, and then here it is set in the PTY object by the TC set 
structure. So I figured this is it. Done. Easy peasy. How easy can it be? And it didn't work. It still makes no sense to me that you're not allowed to set up a baud rate of a virtual terminal, but you are allowed to set up flow control. Inconsistency. I don't like that. So my next strategy was to think in the cute way and find signals that are connected. Assuming that if, for example, a buffer is full, it would need to send a signal to read the buffer. And here I found the connects, read notifier and write notifier. And they call the K can read and K can write methods. So I figured let's look those up. This is the original code that I encountered. Read from the master file descriptor, that is the file descriptor to the PTS. Read the contents of that file descriptor buffer into PTR with the number of available bytes, so in one go. So what I figured to test this is actually change available to one and just call a Q thread sleep on there of one millisecond, because one millisecond is about 9600 bots. So I added this code and I also changed that available to one because we only need to send one byte at a time and then wait. And that actually worked. So this is the location where we now need to patch it. So I wrote my code, which also is uh, checking whether your uh, input doesn't cause a division by zero, always very important. And we have a, a static define baud rate on top. So you can set that to any baud rate below 56,000, including 56,000, then it would behave like a one character terminal, which will wait every character that we send. And above 56,000, it will behave again like uh, the original code, sending the whole available byte stream in one go to the terminal. Now it's always very important that when you use a division, that you actually check that you're not dividing by zero, because somebody could put in the baud rate zero, just to be malignant, and it will break. So I check here if the bytes per second is not uh, a zero, and that it is greater or equal than 56,000, then we will send one byte at a time with the sleep in there. Since we're calculating now uh, smaller fractions than a millisecond, I use Q thread microsecond sleep, which conveniently also takes a float, so I don't need to convert that. Cute is really cute, it's awesome. Whilst playing around, I came across a bug that they would have never seen with the PTS being a virtual device and sending everything to the screen at one go. Here I actually list the contents and press Ctrl C and it doesn't stop. A real terminal has an interrupt on Ctrl C and will actually uh, clear its receive buffer. And here I press Ctrl C and it didn't do anything. It waited until the whole ring buffer was actually flushed to screen. There we go. Yes. So you see my several Ctrl C's there. Uh, I need to patch this. I can't work with this. So I figured I can use the KCAN write because this slowdown was in the read, so the write must handle the writing part. See if I can put something in here. No, not really. That will be very, very dirty. So let's create our own function called is Ctrl C pressed. We're making basically our own software interpretation of a real terminal's Ctrl C interrupt. So when Ctrl C is pressed, we need to check for character three. And this looks a bit convoluted because the buffers is a list of QRA bytes. I don't know why they did that. That's why I used the four and the auto. And basically the count will increment and we will look at the position in the current qbyte array, that is C, if character three is set. Character three is the Ctrl C key combination. So if that is set, we will set the result to true and we break out of this loop. And otherwise we will continue looping and we will return false if it isn't in there. This may seem like inefficient, but on these fast computers it's okay. And your uh, keyboard buffer isn't that big because you don't really type that fast anyways. This will perfectly work fine for our use case. So now let's have a test. 
Right list, control C, and it stops immediately. This is the behavior that you want. Cool, fixed. All that's left is the UI. So I currently have added the set baud rate underneath the blinking cursor. So if we go to the new version, there, let's start that. You can see we already have that UI field. We can enable it. We can change this. This I will patch further. So say 9600 bots. As soon as you click away, it will save automatically. That is uh, the magic of Q settings. So if we go back here, you will actually see it saved it. That's settings. So the UI part I also already have done. I just need to pass it all the way on through the object hierarchy with all these nested objects and that I'm still doing. So what I did to implement the UI is I was looking for a blinking cursor because I wanted my uh, thing underneath there and the behavior to be the same. And the use custom command. Custom command is a uh, text field that allows you to enter a command. So basically I borrowed from the use blinking, the checkbox and the custom command here. So I knew what to fill in to the QML. Usually you will draw these UIs with a uh, Q Creator app. Uh, since this is already there, I figured just add it by hand to every location. This is the saving part of the uh, configuration because we need to save it as well and retrieve it. So I set some uh, in the default profiles just, uh, just to experiment to see if it actually reads them. That all looks good. So the load and the save is done and then we go to the UI part which is uh, on this tab, settings terminal tab and I added a checkbox with the binding and the text field and again I just copied what was already there and just amended it. That is uh, the easy thing of actually patching somebody else's code. You can just look the way that they do it. Copy, paste, change, easy peasy, done, lemon squeezy. So all that's left is now passing the value from the UI all the way through the object hierarchy to the KPTY device. I will need a couple hours to figure that one out. So there you have it. We like it slow like we did in the old days. Yeah. And now the cool retro term is even cooler. Especially when I finalize the configuration via the UI, yeah. which we're pretty much there. So a uh, couple of hours I need to find to uh, round it off. But yeah, it is an awesome terminal emulator. So uh, I will put a link into the description of the two files that have changed. You just override them for now and uh, that will work. Then you have a nice slow one and you can change that define baud rate to whatever baud rate you want to see how slow you want to go. And it compiles pretty fast. First time takes a bit, but after that it's like bam. It's QT fucking rules. I love QT. I actually used QT from the movie Dunkirk to write a plugin for the compositor that Digital Domain uses, which is called Nuke. Now Nuke is the de facto standard compositor. And a compositor is basically a program that takes a different elements, CG elements, real elements, etc. and stacks them on top. And for this one we needed to track the motion of the ocean so that we could have the 2D uh, life jackets and debris sort of follow along because initially they didn't do that and on a 70 millimeter film print you can't get away with anything. Everything that is out of the ordinary sticks out. So. I hope you learned something, install cool retro term, make it even cooler and just use it and relive the awesome 80s and 90s. What an era that was. And I'll see you in the next one.